Hey guys, it's Chris from Trejo Infinity. And today, <laughs> I, can't, I can't even tell you that one serious. All right, so I know it's been a while since I've done some sim videos, but I have finally decided, hey, I saw an awesome idea, create a Civilization Wealth Gold series. I did, however, create one in the past, which honestly, if you want me to be truthful about it, it absolutely sucks. It doesn't explain anything. The gold, the, the gold thing I did, I don't know what I was doing. I could have did so much better. So this time, this time, guys, for real, this time, this time, I promise you, this time, for real, this time, I promise this time, I promise you guys that it's gonna be better than the last time. So before I kick this off, I wanna go ahead and give a like you know a quick um, introduction of to what we will be doing, and which is if I can you know actually be prepared for once and have my stuff up for me to see, which I don't. Uh, in a goal style victory here, so this is the one thing that we have to remember. In a goal style victory, I'm gonna say it like that the whole time, the whole way through the game. You have two things you have your direct effects and you have your indirect effects now you might be thinking what does that mean well hold on sit down let me let me explain it to you so your direct and your indirects are basically um let me uh let me try to clarify it a little bit all right so your direct effects add an instant change to your current gold flow which I, what i mean by that is for direct text or direct um anything because really direct doesn't mean just text that's why i try to try to specify it as direct and indirect it's just anything that uh instantly changes your goal so if you built a market or if you discovered um or you researched um the uh, diplomacy you know something like that anything that's direct that the moment you get it it's going to change your goal and boost it up which i'm only going to really refer to gold but tech will be used in just in this just a little bit because you do need tech to get gold but yeah anything that's direct that changes your gold is a direct effect now your indirect effects are kind of different now what your indirects is basically anything that will boost your gold over time so you guys can see where I'm going with this like what indirect would be something like an aqueduct or if you got um, irrigation first or something like that you know eventually is gonna boost up your city and which in turn will be able to get you more gold because it's gonna give you more more um, spaces so really indirect is basically just saying uh, better ways to boost your city and grow it so that's basically what that is and there is one more thing which is key moves key moves are another important factor to winning an economic victory and key moves are just anything that's very important because in Civ the one thing you have to look forward to is taking advantage of anything that happens the moment happens you have to take advantage of, of it right then and there you can't wait if you want to win then that's the best way to winning that's your best way of securing your economic victory so that's pretty much the introduction that i tried to write but i can't i can't write off i can't go off script so now we're, we're about to free ball it here with all all said and done um so we're gonna of course actually i, I forgot something else too um if you guys are here to play beast online as you can tell i'm not i don't teach things to play beast online i teach things to beat deity I mean, you can take these things and incorporate them online, yeah, but it's not really to play online. So when I when I look at my comments and I see I would destroy you on Civ, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead and just start off with, we're not going to go through all the Civs like last time. Like, actually, I will go through the Civs because Civs are important, but not right now. So if you want to see which Civs are best for gold, then it'll be closer to the end of the video just because I believe I've made about five videos now that have me explaining, you know, the sieves over and over and over. So I'm gonna put that at the end this time so you guys don't have to watch that if you don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over here to the sieve that we were gonna be using, which is the Egyptians. Now I do want to do a comparison before I start off. You might be thinking like, you know, why didn't I use, um, who was it? Um, I can't remember who was it that was also a uh, good person. I honestly cannot remember for the life of me. 
Well, any other Civ, just in general. <laughs> any other Civ. It's just because the Romans... I mean, the Rom Why did I say the Romans? The Egyptians. Oh, my God. The Egyptians have one plus food and trade from desert regions. That is the main key thing of why I choose them. There's no other reason. That is the main reason out of all the stuff you see up here. It's because of their ancient boost. Because with that ability, if you find a desert spot with the Egyptians, or if you find two of them, which is, that's your key, uh, your key moment right there. If you find two, you want to settle there with the Egyptians because you can really boost with trading posts and you know go on and on and on but besides that you do also have the chance of an ancient wonder that would really help you now you have chances where you might get a crappy wonder which i've done and it really sucks so there's that too but most of the times if you ever get hanging gardens or a colossus those are your two key ones for winning a uh, gold victory so don't be that person that's going to join a game and if you don't get what you want and leave if don't choose the egyptians don't do it don't do it I see a lot of people doing that. They'll they'll choose it and be like, okay, look, I got the poop the poop wonder. Now I'm going to leave. Like really, really, we're in the game. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this. Oh, actually, well, medieval knowledge of irrigation. I don't think I really need to go th through all that stuff because you know, not really a bonus to go. Besides modern, of course, 50% car caravans to go. That of course is a, you know a no brainer. But besides that, everything else isn't really for you know for gold for gold. For gold. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to make this more entertaining because it's gonna be boring as crap. I hope you guys know. Like I'm gonna put myself to sleep. So the one thing you want to look for, I'm not gonna go on about how to successfully establish your city. I'm gonna go on about how to ses successfully establish your Egyptian city. So the best thing to do is, like I said, if you find at least two, two little deserts, the best place to go. But as you guys can see, there is a huge problem with this. I have no trees. I've did that. I've done it once. I've done it once before. I have went into a game, and I, I settled with no trees. But it had three. What did it have? It had three um, three desert spots and a monarchy place. So it was a really good, a really good thing. But it took me a while to get started. So I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm actually not gonna do that. Believe it or not. We need to find somewhere where we can at least establish a start city and then build a second city which i believe i'm too close because i would want to put a city probably right about here this would be a ideal spot or at least i could do a courthouse you know but i don't sorry about this like i said i'm just trying to i'm trying to pace this out i might just make a city right here which i think might be the better of the two because it's going to take me Three turns to get to Warriors, which then I can go ahead and take this Barb Camp. Let's see, three turns would be 3,600 BC, and it would still have two. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and settle here just because three granaries, indirects. Granaries are indirects. I probably will go over that again, but just to let you know, granaries are indirects because it will eventually boost your city up. So let's go ahead and settle real quick. This is, um, uh, and this is the moment where you just have to be so sad because you get something so poo. That you just like, oh, really? That's that's what I got. That's what that's what you want to give me. Oh, okay, but anyway, um, hopefully it doesn't skip my turn. I didn't think about my turn. Hopefully it didn't skip it. I don't think it skipped it. Did it skip my turn? No, nah, I didn't skip my turn. Cool. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and bump this thing off and start learning about a gold victory as we take our militia. And wow, he's he's already here. Ah, okay then. That sucks. That sucks terribly. Go away, Aztecs. God dang it. Um, how is he? Oh, he used his instant money. He'll be here. Oh, shucks. He might actually. Well, no, I'm in his way. I'm in his way. He won't be able to get there in time. Cool, cool. All right. So I thought he was gonna ruin us for a second and take this bar place, but he's not gonna ruin us. He's actually gonna. I don't know what he's gonna do. I'm gonna use this guy to try to explore and figure out what's closed off and what's not closed off. But in the meantime, what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna try to build a, a a population city to you know create more efficient cities that will allow us to in turn you know create a really nice gold city because this one's not gonna be a great city for gold I mean I mean it's gonna be a little decent but you get what you get so I didn't get anything really nice so I'm gonna hold off on my warriors because I don't really need them too bad just yet but before we really kick off that, we're going to go over to the Civilopedia. This is where it gets boring. It's going to get very boring. So, 
prepare yourselves get on your boring caps if you don't have your boring caps on put on your boring caps but it's gonna be very 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 informational so we're gonna start it here at the top and we're gonna go through everything up here so this video mostly is gonna be looking through the Civilopedia so <clears throat> I probably will um I'll title them I will title the each part of the video so you can skip through and see what you want to see but we're gonna go through your directs and end indirects together just because I don't want to go through them and then go right back through them again. So we're going to start off with your anchor watt for your artifacts because everything that will affect you gold wise I am going to explain in this. This is going to be the most informational thing ever just because because somebody somebody wanted to be rude. So alright so we're going to start off with the anchor watt. The anchor watt really it is what what does this even do <laughs> let me see what this does i forgot what this does um it will immediately build a wonder in your okay yeah so an anchor watt really is either a direct or an indirect really just because i i i put it as a direct just because i believe it's more so direct because every time you get the anchor watt now now remember it, it builds a great pyramid most of the time it can build a lot of different things but always for me I don't know how to change it. I can't really say how to change it, but it builds a great pyramid, which the reason why that is a direct effect is because the moment you get your great pyramid that unlocks all government access. So that means you can go ahead and get democracy, which your democracy is a direct, um, it's a direct, what is it? A, dem a democracy is the, uh, I'm trying not to say tech because I know it's not a tech. Well, it's on the tip of my tongue. You guys know what, it, what it's in, the government, government. There we go. So your democracy is a uh, direct government effect to your direct effect of effects Ark of Covenant is not on the list at all for anything that's gonna be really helpful in this I mean you know I mean it could be helpful if you really want me to go on and say how it could be helpful I could just tell you you know it would help you get great people so it would be more so an indirect but I didn't title it because I don't believe it's really helpful as unless you're going for I guess culture now Knights Templar same thing it's it's not on the list not on the list of what you need to go for now of course the lost city of Atlantis is something that is is really more so an indirect if you thought it was direct now it's an indirect because it's not really guaranteed of what you'll get you just get a random free three tech now the school of Confucius if I said that right I might have said it wrong that on the other hand can be direct but I went ahead and put it as indirect because this is more so an indirect thing because it's not really guaranteed that it's going to give you what you need but it will give you two two great people which is very important so if you got a great gold person that would then be a direct effect to your city because a great gold person let me stop saying direct and indirect I feel like that's too much I'm gonna try to like not say it as much but um that would be like a you know an instant increase to your gold flow because you would want to settle him in a gold victory you never really want to use your great gold people as for gold ever because that's not going to help you so the school is more so like i said it's in the indirect category and it is something that you do want to look for though now of course the seven cities of gold is a direct effect so let me just tell you why i keep saying direct and indirect so much because direct is basically what you want to go for first no matter what up and foremost the first thing you want to do is go for a direct effect because it's instantly going to boost your goal. So the reason the seven cities of gold is uh, direct. It's not an overtime direct. It's more so like it's instant because you know you get gold from it. So it's still good. So we're gonna go over to your buildings. And out of all these buildings, out of all this stuff in here, the only three direct effects for your buildings would be a bank, of course, because if you read right here, it says, what does it say? Building a bank will quadruple the effect of your focus in city trade and gold production. So. It's going to quadruple whatever you're doing. I thought it tripled. I did not know it quadrupled. That's actually new to me. Okay, so I did not know that. That's actually, it's a learning experience. So it quadruples, doesn't triple. It quadruples the effect, which is pretty awesome. So a bank is one of the most important things to have in your buildings of cities. And as I go on, I will tell you that you need a lot of cities. That's the main, another main thing, but that's not on the, that's not what we're doing right now. So let's keep going. The next thing is no other than um, if I can find it in the list, if I can, if I can find it, if I, <laughs> okay, we found it. Courthouse. A courthouse is a direct effect. Why? Because it expands your city. Mm, let's see if the best way I can put an example to it. Let me just actually show you an example. For a courthouse, when you when you build a courthouse, it expands your city. 
in all four directions by three. Now I'm going to show you as best as I can. So if you were to build a courthouse, these three spaces, you would have three spaces of you would have three spaces directly below it basically and then on the left side you would have three spaces to the left you would have three spaces to the right and as well three spaces up and if you if that doesn't make sense i'll try to explain a little bit better it basically would expand your range of area so these three spaces you would then have access after building a courthouse to three spaces under it so it works out in all four directions just like that so your three spaces on the left again you would have the three spaces on the left side so you don't have the corners you wouldn't have these corners like if you look at the corners of like right in between you would not have these like kind of corners around here so that's something to keep in note if you're trying to expand like if i was to build a courthouse it would be great for obtaining this one desert spot right down there but I, however however i would not gain the tree spot now let's go back over to the Civilopedia, back to the boring lecture about how to do a gold victory and really this is like I said mostly just an explanation of everything that will affect your city so you could take this first video and right off the bat go use all this knowledge and you know just become a beast or you can watch the next video and see how I actually put all this knowledge together so anyway we're gonna keep going with a market is another direct effect that you really would want to build in your city the reason why you would want a market is simple it you know doubles I believe let's see yeah it doubles the effects of your city Sorry I'm not so sure on everything because I don't know the, uh, I don't really read the Civilopedia, I just play and I just, you know, kind of do it off instinct. So, you know, it's one of those things you'll pick up after a while of playing. And then finally, 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 the last thing on your direct effects that you really want to go for, for first is a trading post. Now, a trading post will, it will bring you more, more um, trade from the, the, from your desert spots, basically. So that's why I chose the Egyptians. So... I don't know exactly how much it increases it by because it doesn't really doesn't really tell you but normally if you have I think it, it gives you in the beginning of the game it gives you three three spaces three uh, resources from one desert spot so if you had two that would be six double with a um, library and like or a market or whatever depending on what you're doing but the reason why a trading post is very important because the main thing to do when you play with this sieve is build a massive main tech city you need a main tech city no matter what no matter what you do you always need a main tech city and that's usually the first thing you want to build which i did not build it would have been perfect if i built a main tech city here but that would really in turn mess me up for getting my warriors out exploring and getting the things i need done so instead i'm going to build a uh, um a population pumping city and then eventually build a major tech city probably right here or if i find somewhere else I'll build a major tech city and then after you build your major tech city now you guys might not believe me but that is the only tech city you will ever need and you will you can still dominate in a game you could literally pump out from a major tech city like up to like maybe like you start out getting like 50 and you go up to 100 and 300 700 and be like about like a thousand plus from one major tech city if you do it if you do it correctly following all these steps so we're going back over to the long lecture of the Civilopedia. It's like Attack of the Civilopedia right now. So after that, that is all your direct effects for buildings. That's basically, when I, again, like I said, with direct, that means your most important thing. So after you get this stuff, or at least once you get as much as you can out of this stuff, you want to focus on these other stuff because you want to kind of combine them. You don't want to just try to focus on just one because it's very impossible because it takes a while to get to banks and stuff like that so you want to kind of shift in between your directs and your indirects so now when you, when you um your directs your indirects i mean your indirects for your buildings would be starting off your aqueduct just because it increases the population growth of your city which in turn will allow you to get more trade spots increasing your gold flow so that is why it's an indirect effect over time it will help you now also you have your granaries your granaries of course they give you like how i got my city right now they give you more more population from granary well whatever the spot is called i cannot remember the plane spots for planes they give you more population from planes so that is another indirect that will help you over time and also your harbor now your harbor of course gives you one plus food from the sea so if you have sea spots then of course this will again help you out now i'm going to go through real quick just for my purposes here to see if i missed anything because i wasn't really focusing on the indirects when i made it i didn't think about it too much just make sure i didn't miss any of the indirects no i didn't 
Okay. No, I didn't miss any of the indirects. All right. So like I said, of course, I'm not covering stuff like university because that's, you know, science. So civilizations, like I said, that's at the end. We're going to go past that. Info. This stuff is important. Like, um, not, not, not the info, my bad. These concepts are very important. I'm not going to use these in the video, but where I really got most of my information for like every type of victory is when you come over here to stuff like wealth and stuff, it really explains in detail how you could win with wealth everything that will increase your gold things you can use for gold and just everything that you could ever want to know for gold that's where i got most of my information and same for vic um for like domination i don't know where all the other stuff is but it's all in here you just look through it and you can find it and at the very end you have the world which is another important thing it explains everything that's in Civ. Like this concept, like I said, it tells you the terrain, your resources, combat effects of terrain, or all the stuff that you could ever need to know. Believe me, believe me when I say this, you don't know everything about Civ unless you're an Ultimate Triarch. Like you don't. Like I came in here for once and did not know half of this, like some of the stuff in here. And I was kind of surprised at some of the stuff I found. Like it actually explains every type of resource. That would have been very helpful for me, you know? If I, I actually will scroll down to it. It's going to be a little scroll because it has a lot of stuff in here to read. So if you go down to the resources tab, this is um, what we're going to be covering a little bit later, which actually we're going to cover that now. I take it back. We're going to cover it now. So there's not really, is there? Yeah, there is. There's indirects and directs. So starting off from the top, aluminum, of course, I'm just going to, I'm going skip, to skip past everything that's not what we're focusing on. So cattle plus, what was that? <laughs> plus three food. So with cattle, it really just, um... It's an indirect because, of course, it increases your food. So if you settle by cattle, it's a very great um, thing for your, your indirects. You have your dye as well. That is a direct because plus three trade is either science or gold, whatever you want to switch it off to. Fish, another that's another indirect. And then you have your game, which is another indirect. I believe those are the deer that are on the map. Now, for pictures and stuff, I will try to pop pictures up. If I don't pop pictures up, then I couldn't find pictures or... I just didn't put pictures up, sorry. <laughs> and if I did, if I if I did, thumbs up for me. If I didn't, thumbs down for me. But don't don't thumbs down me. But gems as well. That's another direct. Gold plus three gold. Another direct. I'm just gonna kind of like kind of skim through these just so I don't waste all your time because I'll probably be talking about it later. Oak is another. Actually, oak is. I don't think oak is either one. I'm not sure about oak. I, I think oak gives you production. I'm not sure what oak does. I don't, re I don't really remember too well. Then you have your spices, direct. You have your wells and your wheat, also indirect. And your wine, which is direct. So we just got all the resources out the way. So these are things that you want to really consider when settling a city. So when you look down and see like certain things on the ground, which we'll see in throughout this whole this whole series, it really um, it really changes how much you'll get in the in a sieve because all this stuff usually increases. I don't really know how the stuff increases, but over time, this stuff actually adds on and increases over, I guess, um, eras or whatever. I'm not sure exactly, but that's the closest explanation you'll get from me. Now for governments, let me just pause my train of thought. Okay, so for governments, you have your directs and indirects. And for direct, you, all you have... I feel like y'all are gonna get annoyed of how many times I'm saying this. So the most let me just let me do it this way. Your most important and your second, your or your least important. So your most important is your democracy. Of course, democracy is important. Out of all this stuff up here, democracy is the most important. It doubles, I believe it doubles to make sure I get this right. Um, usually it, it feels like it doubles. So I'm just gonna say it doubles the output of all your trade, gold and science. So with a democracy, that is your main thing to go for. Now the only other thing up here that could really help you is a republic because that will that is the indirect plus a direct important least important because it allows you to build more cities now when it comes to great people that is another thing you want to keep in mind great people great explorers your great builders and your great artists those are your three most important things that will help you win when it comes to great people the one thing the three things you want to settle well use not settle because a great builder you don't want to settle a great builder when a great explorer of course it's obvious that's the great gold guy that's the one that you can um you settle in your city and he increases your gold flow your great builder you always want to use him to build something like a trade fair 
or um, a uh, other wonders. I can't remember the other one. East India Company. And I believe that might be it on the most important. But you want to use him to build something like that, which will really help you out on your trade or your gold or whatever you're trying to do. And last but not least, of course, the great artist because he allows you to convert other cities. That's the whole point of him. If you're playing online, offline don't matter. Unless you're playing with your friends, you don't want to be a dick. But if you're playing on, I mean, if you're playing online with randoms, convert their cities, like always. That's the main important thing to do with great people. Now, you might be thinking, why did I just explain great people? Well, of course, we know great people. Was the reason I explained great people is so that you can now look at the most amazing hidden thing that I honestly did not know about until I came here. Every tech that you research really affects how what great person you're going to get. As if you read right here, this is I don't even know how to say it. A sop, a soup, a sup, a sapa. I'm gonna call it, this is a sapa with the fro. So you got a sapa with the fro, and to get this man, you need writing. So the moment you rec the moment you um you uh, research writing, then that allows you to get this 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 uh well it gives you the ability to unlock this great person so really that's one of the most important things to look at if you really want to go here and see which great people are required to see your better chance of getting that type of great person like getting a great builder or something you just go in here and look at the tech required because it actually has a um effect on your on which great person you're going to get so that's something to keep in mind again we're gonna skip past leaders and civs, and we already went the resources. Actually, here, there's here are the pictures. Okay, never mind. I don't have to put pictures up. All right. So really, I'm gonna go through it. I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm just gonna show you. You know, you can guys, you guys can look at the pictures, look at the names, slow it down if you want to, if you want to slow it down. But if you were curious and didn't know what one of the things I said, like for resources, was, here are all the resources explained with pictures. So there you go. This is what all the resources look like. I'm just going to scroll right back and let you guys see it. And there we go. Now what resources done. Rewards, that's just for, I guess, single player achievements or whatever. I don't really... It doesn't have any purpose so now we're going to jump into technologies now this is the main and most important part like i said you always need gold and with the egyptians the best way to play with them i don't know if any other cities work as good as them but is to have one super city for tech which i will show you a what a super city looks like probably on a side note type of thing like i'll have to do a re-record or i might 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 i might i might be able to make a super city here but Really, super cities are all about luck. So when I say a super city, I don't mean just a great city with just a lot of tech. I mean, right off the back, you had a lot of tech. Well, we got a lot of tech coming in. You had the most amazing luck. You got the wonders. You got the Colossus, East India Company, University, Libraries, Trading Post, um, Monarchy Die. It's like Spice. It's like all this stuff. Like it's it's possible. It's possible to get super cities. They're not rare they're kind of you know uncommon they're kind of in that category they're uncommon they don't happen very often too often but they do happen pretty in a good amount that you will get one every so often but anyway to technologies we're going to go ahead and go off with the um most important ones that you can really that really show will really help you in your venture into gold so we're going to go ahead and start with the most amazing one banking so as you saw before when it came to buildings to get buildings you need banking so banking is definitely good for that but also banking gives you a hundred gold if you get it first so that is why I'm going to explain that one now so if you get it first you get banking you get to be able you get yeah you be you can you don't I don't know what I'm trying to say <laughs> you can build a bank from getting bacon and moving on code of laws code of, law, code of laws you gotta be you gotta follow this code of laws now the code of laws allows you to get um, the trading post built but also if you get it first it automatically builds your trading post so this is the reason why it's important to get the trading post very get it first as the Egyptians or any other seven for that matter next on the list would be corporation now a lot of people don't know about this which I'm gonna go ahead and just jump over to the right because this is where the order you would go in from industrialization and corporation one of the most 
major, when I, I cannot stress this word, a major imperative, the most important, magnificent things that you can do for your goal of victory is get industrial industrialization, if I can say it right, and corporation right after. The reason being is because when you get this tech first, it allows you to get five plus gold in every single one of your cities. Now, I do want to check something real quick before I say something on the matter. No matter the project you're searching, industrialization will get it done faster. It allows your factories, increases production if you get it first. All your cities will receive a gold bonus production. Okay, so yeah, it gives you... I don't remember exactly how I explained it last time. Um, I think it's the multiplier per city. I don't remember the exact explanation I gave you last time, but it increases the gold in every single city. And if you want to know exactly how, just refer back to the old video on my page that I don't know which video it was. That's like, that's like the worst like, the worst instructions ever, but it gives you plus gold, I believe the explanation was um, five for every city or something like that. Probably not, but it, basically the, the point is industrialization gives you gold from every single one of your cities, which allows you to get a crap ton of gold storing up. And the same thing happens when you get corporations. So if you get both of them, it doubles the amount of which uh, of your bonus. It doubles your bonus. So you can get your bonus, then you can get double your bonus, which goes to all your cities, which is very important because if you want a, uh, an example, because I can't really think of how to explain it. If you were making 50 gold and got both of these with a, a good amount of cities, you could go from 50 gold to 200 to 500 gold, probably even even more than that. I don't know, like if you had your market spill. So you go from like 50 gold to like the more logical would be like you go from 50 gold to 300 gold. So you can see how eventually if you had like 300 gold, that would be amazing because it can take you from like 300 gold to like 800 gold. So gold per turn, I should say. So that's very important. Remember that one. Next to that is markets, so of course. Well, not markets, currency, which gives you markets, but still, you know, getting the tech first, I believe, um, gives you a free market. Yeah, you get a free market. Um, and a free caravan unit. Huh. Didn't know that one. Hold on. Actually, that is something I did not know. Huh. If you're the first to research currency, you will receive a marketplace building in one of your cities and a free caravan unit. Okay, I did not know you get a free caravan because I usually get currency from the gold milestones and if you get it that way then it doesn't give you the the uh, advantage for getting it first but that's something to note i, I gotta check that out but also it allows you to study a trade fair which we i don't think we got to wonders yet but of course trade fair is good but i'm not going to go into that just yet so then you got your democracy of course i've already explained that the democracy is very important getting it first doesn't really matter but it's just getting democracy in general is really good so then you have, I think electronics is on the list. I cannot remember. So let me refer back to my technologies here. Electronics is. So what does electronics do again? Well, let's find this one out together. I don't remember. Um, all your cities will receive a bonus of trade production. Okay, so yeah, that is definitely one of the go-to things to get first. So if it's already researched, it doesn't really matter, but Researching it gives you a better chance to get a great scientist or apparently a great scientist as a great person. So yeah, you get the great scientist, but uh, that doesn't really matter. But the whole point of getting it first is just to get the trade production to your city. So that's the main thing to look at for there. Globalization, of course, if you get it first, it gives you 500 gold. That's another important gold factor thing. That's something you should get. We're, we're just doing important. And then we'll go back through going back to the opposite side to get the other ones now. Yeah, that's indirect and networking 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 what is net is networking um if you get it first universities no ne networking is only important for the wonder that it gives you i believe networking allows you to build oh yeah the internet wonder which we haven't got to that point again another wonder that's very important to go for and i think that's about it on yeah, that's about it on the important stuff. So we're going to go back to the left and get the least important stuff, which, you know, again, like I said, it's indirect. I'm trying not to say it so much, but I can't help but say indirect, apparently. So for indirect, pottery, of course, is one of them. It allows you not getting the first. It just allows you to construct the granary, which, of course, is important for your um, your victory. And mass media, if you get it first, it gives you one plus population to all your cities. So that's important. 
Irrigation, the same thing happens. So if you get mass media and irrigation, you'll get one plus for each one. So that's two plus. So those are definitely something to go for. Um, invention is indirect or indirect. I don't know. Honestly, I just I lost count on this one. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting to mute my phone. <laughs> so the reason it's it's either one is because you get a free great person for getting invention, of course, and you know. A great person could be a uh, director indirect. So if you guys are wondering why I'm going by through, I'm going through this really fast because I did another video about um, like tech lines, and I've also did videos explaining each of these technologies. So if you really want to know more about this, look at those videos that are specific to tech tech lines, and you know study a text. So um, that might be it on things that you really want to go for for important to unleash important and i believe so yeah that's it for technology so remember those now we're gonna go through terrains oh bear with me guys you're almost there you're almost done with this long and obnoxious boring intro introduction video to everything that we're gonna be doing and just basically this video is just for uh anybody that wants to know the um the the factual things that you you could take right now and not even watch the rest of the video next video that's going to come out you know so deserts of course deserts yep that's the main one that's the only that's the only uh direct type of effect thing that you got going for going for a gold victory just because it's where you get your trading posts and your most of your resources but also grasslands indirect because you know grasslands are just natural and they give you more population and as well plains are a major indirect because plains allow your city to grow massively now believe it or not believe it or not but units are in the categories of directs and indirects so it's only a few you have your caravans you guys know what caravans are that's a no-brainer if you don't know what caravans are they are the things that you send into people's cities to get more gold and if you did not know i will tell you this the further the uh, city of where the uh, caravan was constructed, the more gold you get. And the more, like, the harder it, basically the harder it is to get to a city, the more gold you get. So if it was a city that was made on an island and there's a city all the way to the other side, that's legitly the only way to get there is with a boat, you're going to get a crap ton of gold by sending it in that way. So there's, there's another thing. And if you didn't know this as well, I'm going to throw in with caravans, if you put them into a... Uh, army you get more than you would get if you sent three individual caravans so that's a little thing to note a little side note units i wonder did we do great people we did great people so you guys really much should know this you know i'm going to just explain it really quickly because it has the pictures you got your great thing thinker which is your convert guy in the convert cities you have your great builder to build stuff so you see what it looks like and your great explorer to um you know to settle in a city and as well your great humanitarian which allows you to boost your cities and as well as a great scientist but he's not really he wasn't on the list but just just you know great scientists you know to get your text faster um and i believe that's it well no we got two more on the list which are settlers which are direct of course you need your settlers you need to know where to settle your cities of course that's important i explain it so much but settlers are another thing that you want to keep in mind your spies as well can do some very good sneaky deeds so spies are there they are very key to winning a go victory as well you need to be <clears throat> you need to, you need to be observant of like everything around you if you see somebody get a great person you need to go in there with that spy and steal that great person and as well if you see some nice looking cities you need to go in there with your spies and steal some gold so either way this is going to help you get some gold and that is it for units upgrades of course not and then finally on the list i know you guys are so happy you're probably you probably skipped through half the video if you don't really care about this stuff but we are now at the wonders now for wonders i'm just go through one more time and make sure i got them all noted the apollo program is definitely a indirect i don't know why it's an indirect so let's see why i like I, basically if you're wondering why i don't know off the back of my head because I don't really remember half this stuff I just wrote it down what is what and then I left it for to myself like I told myself basically through writing you're gonna explain this and figure it out you know and then I told myself screw you I'm not gonna figure it out I'm just gonna wait you know so I kind of had an argument with my own self which makes no sense but anyway upon completion of the Apollo program 
Its builder will receive all technologies. Okay, you get access to all technologies. That's I can see why that is an indirect. Um, getting getting all the you know what? Screw this. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Screw the Apollo program. <laughs> That's a waste of your time. By the time you get the Apollo program, let me actually go back to it real quick. Yeah, by the time you get the Apollo program, you practically got all the tech. So it's at this point, there's no point. If you don't have gold by then or tech, you know, it's just like, all right, screw it. Screw it. So Colossus, no, it's not what you need. Colossus, you know, again, wait, hold on. Let me take it back. What am I saying? Colossus is something you need. It doubles all trade production. Okay, I was thinking Colossus does the only science because I'm an idiot and I only use it for science but Colossus actually can double gold I just never use it for gold I'll put it in my super cities for tech an East India company as I said before it allows you to get trade uh, plus from the seas which eventually increases over time which is really nice and it really benefits you um your great pyramid of course of it explain that one it gives you all governments Hanging Gardens, definitely, that's indirect. It allows you to increase your city by 50%. So basically, if you're at, if your city's a level 6, it goes to a level 9. It takes half your 6, which is 3, and adds it to your 6, which is equal to 9. And also, let's say you're an uneven number like your 7. It doesn't take half of 7, because that would be 3.5. Instead, it takes 4. It just rounds off your 3.5 to 4, so then it takes 4 and adds your 4 to your 7. So that's a little side note. And... There's the internet, the most amazing thing, one of one of those uh, important things to get for your gold city. If you have the internet, ink, it doubles all your cities, so everything that you have is completely doubled. So no matter what it is, production, gold, population, doubled. It's amazing. So, well, hold on, let me make sure I'm right. Internet, before I tell you some bullcrap. We'll see the gold production in all their cities. Okay, I might be wrong. I take it back. I take it all back. Don't <laughs> disregard anything I just said. Apparently, the builder of the internet will see the gold production in all cities is double. So it doubles your gold. Huh. Well, try hard affinity can be wrong sometimes. I just always, when I use it, it looks like my cities go up. So, I, well, they kind of do go up. I, I, I can't. I, I thought it doubled everything. I'm just stuck on that, actually. Um, the builder, yep, it just says gold. I have to test that out, but apparently just increases, it doubles gold. But it doubles all the gold, so still a, a direct because your gold gets doubled. And besides that, there is, I think we're done. Oh, yeah, nope, I almost forgot one of the most important, trade fair. If you can build a trade fair, your city will be beautiful. It will be, oh my gosh, beautiful. So build a trade fair if you can. It also, um, it doubles the gold, apparently, so... Trade fairs are good. Banks, trade fairs, market, all that stuff. So now we're done with this. We're done with the whole long, crappy explanation of, you know, what you need to win a gold victory. All the stuff in there, I explained every possible thing, every legitimate possible thing that you can do for a gold victory. Now... The next video will be us actually using all this stuff, all this knowledge gathered together in like one big whack em punch em mole. You just whack em. I, I don't know what that is, but we're in a, it's a big one whack em punch em mole. And we're going to destroy every other sieve in here. And also, I want to add in, I probably will show you guys a super city. If not in this, I probably won't show you in this video because I'm trying to keep it strictly to what I said it would be, which is, you know, information. The next video, you will see the super city, plus, you will see the whole, you know, playthrough of using the stuff and as well i may upload the initial the initial uh informational sheet that i have constructed that has legitly everything it has pretty much everything you can you need to know about you know tech so well not tech i mean gold everything you need to know about gold so that's good so let's go ahead and do this together we're going to save this game because i honestly was about to quit without saving we're going to find one of these saves like Let's, get, let's do the Americans. Right? I don't know. I don't remember playing with the Americans. We're just gonna overwrite that, because honestly, I don't. I don't come back to play any of my saves ever. I just oh, save them sometimes and forget them. I don't. And we're gonna go back to what I said I would do and explain very quickly, very very quickly, the sieves that are perfect for gold, and you have the Romans. And I'm gonna ex quickly explain why, just so this video doesn't go on too long. So if you want a more in-depth explanation, look at my other videos where I really go in depth about the um the sibs so of course the romans are really good just because you can go half off on wonders you have more great people which in turn can increase your gold 
your Egyptians, you know why. I've explained it. Gold is great with them. To me, I have so far figured out that they are the best in gold for me. Um, Greeks, they start off with knowledge of dem democracy and a courthouse, which those two things are your directs, which will help you out. And then eventually you get half cost with a library, which help if you had a super city. Well, you probably would have you you would have um you would have a um library by then and as well one plus food from sea regions that's an indirect which will help you spanish they can be uh used for gold victory exploration cash is doubled and plus 50 percent gold production would be your main key point in them so industrialization is what you would want to aim for to be able to really dominate with this sieve uh, these two definitely off. They're not. They're not gold victory sieves. Chinese can be anything. So of course the Chinese are on the list because they're very OP. And like I say, they're just OP. Um, Americans, your two plus interest on gold reserves is very, 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 very nice. If you guys don't know what that is. I will explain it in the next video. But it it can be very beneficial in a small way. But every little small way counts. They start with a great person as well. Which is another thing, your one plus food planes, and I'm just gonna throw this in. Factories triple production is, is it does everything. It does everything. The Japanese, uh, yes, uh, Japanese yeah. can be, they can be used for, um, they can be used for gold as well because they get one plus food from the sea. So you can get your food plus your trade from the sea with the Japanese, and that's pretty much it for them. French, no, <laughs> I hate the French. Uh, Gandhi, Gandhi, as you guys remember me saying with the indians i suck with the with the indians but they can be used for a gold tip if you know how to play with them really good but i like i said i cannot play with gandhi i tried and i just hated the game i played it wasn't that good um the arabs 50 percent care of in gold obviously you could sell while that's going to be op as crap and they also get two two percent interest on gold which is really good in a small way your Aztecs, definitely okay. good because they get um, Temple, they produce three science, but that's not really for gold, but it could be go good for your uh, super city as well as they start with gold and they get 50% gold production, which is always important when you're going for a gold vi victory, like that could really spell the difference from an OP sieve and gold to a uh, OP dominant sieve and gold. The Zulu as well have rapid city growth and direct 50% gold production direct, which is two things you want to look at and the english i don't think the english are on the list now the english are not on the list and i'm just going to double check yeah i don't see anything that can really be used for gold from them uh, besides i guess one plus production which allows you to build stuff faster but it's not really it's not really a gold type sieve so you know i'm not going to put this on my list so that's pretty much it for the sieves that's all that i have to say and if you guys have any questions like always leave them down in the comment section below i am sorry for this long 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 video just about the uh Civilopedia. I'm, i i would title this Civilopedia, but i'm pretty sure nobody's gonna look at this if this is titled Civilopedia. but in the next video it's gonna be about the actual playing of the game and that's pretty much it so be on the lookout for the next video guys i'm out chris from tryhard affinity signing out